impossible. So they will say, well, Jesus' word for camel really is like a rope. And so it would be like putting a little piece of yarn through the needle. I mean, it's possible, but, you know, you got to really work at it, you know. So there's something you can work at to get through the eye of a needle. You know, that's one thing. And then others say, well, I found through, you know, archaeology, they found that some of these gates in Jerusalem, uh, were, they'd close at night, and then there's this small gate. So you'd have to kind of bend down and get humble and go through that gate and then you and this gate was called the eye of a needle and so yeah you could get your camel through there but you had to kind of be humble and get down and and you know that's malarkey too that did not happen it does not happen it's not true so all these things that sometimes we were told about this just in a way to kind of make it difficult but not impossible but I'm here to say it's impossible there is no way we can get into the kingdom on our own strength, on our own works. There's no way. It's impossible. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell this guy. It's impossible to be part of God's kingdom and have his shalom on your life if you think you can do it yourself. It's not going to work. It's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. That's the good, that's the good news. Now, you know, I guess the guy went away. I don't know if he ever came back. But then, you know, sometimes we ask, okay, what is Jesus saying here? Is, is he saying all of us need to do that? We all need to give away everything we own, give it to the poor, and live a life of poverty? You know, some people do that. But it seems like Jesus was talking to this one person about that. You know, there were other rich people that supported Jesus' ministry. I think what Jesus is saying is, if you're holding your riches so tightly that you cannot surrender to me, you need to get rid of them. But for those who are disciples that were rich, he was saying, you know, all that, you know, it's all the cattle on a thousand hills is God. So everything you have is from God. So make it available. And so there were many people who supported his ministry and on into Paul and some of the missionary journeys. There were a lot of rich people that helped with those things. That Jesus didn't say, get rid of all you have and come follow me. They were already following him with their wit riches. And so they were holding them so loosely that they were actually helping the kingdom instead of, you know, hindering themselves. Does that make sense to you? Because I've heard people preach... Oh, yeah, that means all of us. We all have to live a life of poverty. And if God called me to that, you know, I'm willing to do that. But that's not what Jesus is saying here. He's saying this one man was holding so tightly he couldn't see the real gospel and the real way to get uh, God's shalom in his life. Anyway, I've, I've talked more than I need to. But I've got a few questions on these uh, Sheets, uh, discussion guides. So if you can stay, I'd love for you to uh, kind of work through those together. Maybe the person who's reading can pick the ones that are most uh, important and then just pray together at the end. That would be awesome. Uh, so let me uh, pray with us and then uh, we'll do our table groups. Lord, this is a, this is a big message. Uh, sometimes we, we skim over this um, camel going into the eye of a needle and we just need to realize it's impossible for us to come to you on our own and become the disciple you want us to be in our own strength. Just help us to let go of things, these small G gods that are in our life, and help us to worship the true big G God and uh, hear you daily as you instruct us through your spirit about how to live, how to how to obey your, your walk for us. And I just thank you for these that are here and pray your blessing on them and their families. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen.